Awesome. I see the button. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. We are going to be showing you the um, new finance tool on Mind Tracker to show you how to manage your organization cost center through Mind Tracker. Um, so on this, when you log into Mind Tracker, you know that this is the home page, and here's where all of your memberships show up. So now, when you click, I'm going to use our um, test organization that we have in the system. When you click on test organization, it's gonna take you to your organization page. This one is very meek and bland, but this you should make sure is updated for your own organization. Um, let me click on someone else's so that you can see. Um, I'll click on our department one. So as an example, this is your about page. So this is where we drive new students or current students to on Mind Tracker. So I wanna make sure that you all have your description updated, just so you know, you can also embed a video. If your organization has a video, you can add pictures. This is your about page. So hoping many of you know this already, but make sure that this is updated. Um, students will have two buttons here to either contact you, um, because we're a department, there's no button to join the department, but for organizations, there is a join button for you all to click on the, or for potential members to click on the join button if they're interested in joining your organization. But for you as an admin of your organization, you will see this manage organization button. So this is what the public sees from your organization and you'll see this manage button. When you click on that, it'll take you to your organization's action center. So in the action center, which is right up here, this is your menu of all the things that you can do within your organization to update your about page, update your roster. And so we have a lot of fun YouTube tutorials for you all on this um, section. Here, just a quick plug for our upcoming virtual fair. Um, as part of Minor Welcome, we are having a virtual involvement fair. So that will take place on Tuesday and on Wednesday. We're hosting one during the day from 12 to 2, and then one in the evening on Wednesday from 5 to 7. So with those two fairs, you can sign up for one or for both. The cool thing is that the fair allows us to have every individual organization have their own link. So if you prefer Google Hangouts, you prefer Zoom, you prefer Microsoft Teams, you get to create your own meeting link and add it to the fair and students will be able to click through and join different um, different people's meetings through this virtual fair. So they can spend two hours going into different meetings, meeting different organizations, different campus departments. Um, so just wanted to do a quick plug for that. But when you get to your organization's menu, the new tab that'll show up here on the bottom is finance. So elections we opened earlier this year, so please know that you can do virtual elections, but now you can click on the finance tab. So when you click on the finance tab, it's gonna show you the your finance request page. So this is gonna be a page where you can manage your account, look at your transactions, but also you can create request money from your account. So there are three main requests that we know student organizations are making right now. One is a cash withdrawal. So many of you would fill out a paper form and request um, cash to be pulled out of your account, whether that was to use it for a meeting or to use it for a purchase you were going to make. So that's still an option. Some of you all process member reimbursement. So if somebody goes and purchases supplies for something, you want to reimburse that individual member and they might have receipts. And then of course you might want to process a check. So maybe you're ordering t-shirts from a company or you're ordering something from a business that you're going to buy something from. You can create a check to get written that will be written directly to that company from your organization cost center. So all of that can now be done online. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is this accounts button. So when you click on this accounts button, it'll take you to a page where you can look at your account. So looking at this, um, most likely you will only have one account in the system. Um, so I'm gonna click on test org finance account. It says our balance is $10,000. That is a fake $10,000. I wish we had all of that money, uh, but that's just a fake $10,000 for sake of showing you all this tool. So when you click on your account, it'll show you your balance, your encumbered funds, and your available funds. So while you're in the process of requesting, so let's say that today we had $10,000, but then we submitted a request for $100, or we submitted a reimbursement for someone. If that, once that request has been approved, so you can see right now I have two requests, but they're unapproved. Once these requests get approved, this money will subtract from my balance so that I can see my available funds. So in my available funds, it will be $10,000 minus whatever money I've already been approved to spend. 
So that way you know that your available money is always reflective of what is available for you to continue to spend. Each of these is a request. So you can see here, this is one section for request, but then you'll have another section for transactions. So this transactions tab will show you everything from deposits. So when you make a deposit into your account, when, you, uh, when money is transferred. So for some of you within your college, where your college transfers you money or you transfer money to another organization, all of that will show up here. Same thing with checks. So if you request a member reimbursement for someone to get a check paid out somewhere, that will all show up here in your transaction. So you'll no longer have to request transaction reports because all of that will show up here. And then any pending requests that you have and approved requests will all show up in this section. Who approves the request and how long does it usually take? That is a great question. I will get to that in just a second because we're gonna show you a um, test submission. But great question, Edgar. Okay. So I'm going to go back. So here's where I was on, at the organization page. I clicked on manage, went to your menu, went to the finance tab. Now from this finance tab, we clicked on accounts, which took you to this page here. But if you were starting back from here, you'll, you'll see that this create request button is the same on this page as it is on this page. So anywhere, any page that you're on, you'll see this create request button. Right now, under Create Request, there are two different options. For now, we're only going to be using Create Purchase Request. So Create Purchase Request is something that you will use just for now. Funding requests will come later. We're building that in as a result of the Student Organization Advancement Fund. But for now, every request will be a purchase request. So you'll click that and you will fill out all of these details. So here's the subject, so the name of your request, um, description, so description of you know, what it is you're requesting this money for, your requested amount of money, and then categories. This category is really important because you're gonna select one of the three that we discussed earlier. So you're either gonna be requesting a cash withdrawal, which is taking money out of your account. You're gonna be requesting a member reimbursement. So if you have a receipt for a member who already paid for something and you're trying to request money specifically for them, that's where you'll do this. And then a vendor payment request. If you're gonna request a check specifically for a vendor or a business that you're working with. So let's say in this case, I'm going to do a vendor payment request and I'm going to click, I'm just going to type in test for now so you all can see. I'm going to do another test for $100. And then the, the account, you'll go ahead and click select and it will open up all of the accounts that are associated with your organization. In general, it will just be one. Um, but in this case, we have three test accounts that we were um, working with. Next up is the payee information. This is really important because your payee information is going to deter or is determined by what type of request you have. So if you're submitting a vendor payment request, this payee is going to be that business. So the first and last name of the business, or you put the full business name here. If it's a student, you're going to put the first and last name of the student along with their address to where that check should be mailed to. Right now, while we are in um, currently functioning the way that we are, which is virtual, cash withdrawals will also be processed in the form of a check. So if you need to get money out of your account, the university can get that money out for you, but they're going to send a check to your organization written to a member of that organization. So if this request wasn't a vendor payment, but instead was a cash withdrawal, you would still fill out the payee information for who it is you want to receive the quote unquote cash. It's really gonna be someone that's receiving the check. So for vendor payment, we would include this information. So let's say that I am paying ABC t-shirt company and I would put a test address. Um, this is here in case there's like a P.O. box or a unit number or an apartment number. And then you would fill out the rest of this information here. Down here, um, this is the additional information that you'll see, which is really important. Um, the information needed will vary based on the request that you are submitting. So here we're gonna ask for a little bit more detail in terms of your request. You know, is there a specific event this was tied to? How are the funds being used? What was the purpose of this event? 
the other one we're asking is who, where was this purchase made or who is the vendor? So that helps us just to have it again one more time in case, you know, this pay information, you put a name of a person, but not the company. We have this as like a fail safe. So you're putting the company here once again. So if you're, you know, cash withdrawal, member reimbursement, um, if somebody went to Walmart and bought supplies for your organization, you would put Walmart in this section. Now in this place, this is, you can see it's not required, it's optional. So what helps our um, team right now in the PBA to process these is the student ID of the person who's going to be receiving the check. So if you are submitting this request and you're looking to get money out of your account, you're going to put your student ID here and your information as the payee. This helps them find you quickly in the system based off of information that you already have from your um, admissions record, from your financial aid, direct deposit. That's another option is that if you're looking for a cash withdrawal and you need a check, they can already pull up all of your information from um, what you use at the institution. This section here is upload file. Please note that it isn't required um, and we don't make it required because you may not have a file for cash withdrawals, but it is required if you're submitting a member reimbursement or a vendor payment. So in this case, if I was submitting a, a vendor payment for ABC t-shirt company, what I would need to submit here is an invoice from the company um, with how much money I need to pay them. So if it's an invoice for 30 t-shirts, it should have the cost, what I'm ordering, and the, the final cost at the bottom. So that's what I would upload here. If it was a member reimbursement, you would upload one file with a copy, whether it's a PDF or um, a PNG of all the receipts in one file to be able to see what exactly is being reimbursed. Last thing, you just click confirm, and then you submit it. So the cool thing about this is that it can be submitted at any point in time. Mind Tracker is open 24 seven. So realistically, I know this took me a while because I was explaining it to you all, but you should be able to submit a request as long as you have this information and your payee information right here rather quickly. I would say within less than 10 minutes. So you submit the request and when you, give it a second, but when you submit the request, it will go through the system and we have built in some layers of approval for these requests and so the request will need to be approved first by the president then by your advisor then by our department but everyone it gets moved to different people automatically so if you are the president and your treasurer submitted this so if i was the treasurer of my organization it is now at the level of my president's approval so the president would get an email to go ahead and approve approve this. So they're going to review it and they're going to send it up to their advisor. Um, so this is the same. So the same way that we clicked on the organization, manage organization, finance tab, this is where we're at. So I would click on this and this will be the same for the president and the advisor. Once they get here, they'll be able to see the request, see the information, see the additional questions. If everything looks good, then I as the president am like, yep, I knew that this needs to come out of our account. This needs to get paid. I'm gonna go ahead and change the stage, meaning I'm gonna move it to my advisor. So I'm gonna move this stage from the president to the advisor. So now it's going up to the advisor and click confirm and click save. Once that is done, your advisor can go in and move it from the advisory level to our department. Our department is basically checking that if you're requesting $100, you have $100 in your account before we send it up to be processed. So your advisor is now looking at this. They'll have the same change stage button. They'll move it from advisor approval to SELC approval. Click confirm, click save. And you can see the date and time of all of these changes as they're happening. So once we receive it in the SELC approval, we'll just verify that the information that you're requesting, um, that you have enough money in your account, and then we will go ahead and move it up to what we have as the VPBA admin approval. Once we move it to that stage, um, want to make sure to click confirm and then click save. Once we move it to that stage, our team that we have at VPBA will start processing the request. So they'll be processing the check and processing it according to the type of payment that it is, whether it's a payment to the specific member for a reimbursement, a payment to a member for a cash withdrawal, or a payment to the vendor, they will start processing all of that. So you'll be able to go back. So we're done with the change request stage. 
Um, we're working on getting them to add a back button because as you can see, there's no back button here. Um, but you can go back to your finance request. And if I, so you can see right here, this is RSO president approval. If I refresh this page, so if I go back and check, you know, two hours later, if my advisor has approved it and so has the SELC, I will see that the stage is now different and it has moved stages. This is the status, so the unapproved status will move to the approved status and you'll get a notification letting you know that your request has been approved. So once it's been approved, that means that VPBA is processing it, getting the check requested for you, and then eventually you'll see that it moves from approved to completed. Once it's been completed, that means that the money has already been transferred, the check has already been sent out, and it is a fully completed request and transaction. So I'm going to pause there really quick um, and answer a question. So I know Edgar said, who approves the request and how long does it usually take? This is a brand new process and we're working through everything. Um, so in terms of approval chains, that will go from your president to your advisor to our department. And our department will then forward it on to um, the team at VPBA. And so we're working behind the scenes with them. They know who is reviewing the different requests. And then in terms of getting it approved, that really depends on your team internally. We have agreed to do our best to um, turn these around within 24 hours. So because it takes us a quick second to review it and send it over, we are going to do our best to turn these, turn these around within 24 to 48 hours. But that is on a business day. So if you submit something Friday at 4 o'clock, I can guarantee you that it won't be processed until Monday morning. So that's just something to consider. Um, you know, you can submit these at any time, but you do want to allow for business processing time, Monday through Friday, eight to five. Good question. So Gina asked, is the advisor the only one that can change to the SELC approval and is there a tutorial to send to our advisor? Um, yes, that is exactly why we're recording this so that we can provide it to other students, but also provide it to um, to advisors. We also sent out on the listserv a PDF tutorial of a screen, uh, screenshot by screenshot, step by step, showing you how to do this. So you're also welcome to send that to your advisor for approval. But we'll make sure the advisors also see this recording so that it's helpful for them too. Um, it is a new process, so worst case scenario, if you're working through some technical issues um, within this next month or two, our team will help all of the organizations kind of move their requests forward. If we have an advisor having a technical issue or someone that hasn't is having issues with the system, we'll work with you all on a case-by-case basis. So just really quick, I do want to take some more questions from everyone. Um, but again, this accounts button is here. If you click on accounts within your organization and you don't see your UTEP cost center, please email our team, um, sos at utep.edu, so we can work with you to make sure. It could be that your organization name doesn't match the name on your account, um, depending on how long um, how long it had been since you set it up and what your organization's name is now so we can work with you to get that up and updated on Mind Tracker. And then with this create request button, just make sure you all are using the um, create purchase request and not the funding request because right now funding requests do not exist. And I am going to wrap up our recording.